Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are party prepping for my son's second birthday party. We decided to go with growing up too fast. He loves cars, and so that was the theme that we chose. So this party prep is going to be a little different than my other party preps. I decided to show you guys the clips in the order that they were filmed. My intention for, you know, presenting my footage in this way is to kind of normalize how things actually get done when party prepping. I know that in the past I have shown like all the footage for me assembling my cake in, you know, consecutive clips, but that's not really how I party prep. And so for anyone who's trying to get into throwing slightly more elaborate parties, I want to give you an idea of what that really looks like you know, for me in, in my house, but it, what it might also look like for you. So my party prepping for this particular party started back in December. I was planning on making brownies for a few events, and I knew that I wanted to make brownies for this birthday party using my little donut molds because they have been a hit in previous parties, and I wanted to have something that resembled a tire. So I made sure that when I was baking brownies for the given event in December, that I would also make just like one little tray using my silicone mold, and then once those were baked, I threw them in the freezer, and I knew that I would make another tray another time. I also did it this way because I kind of need to freeze the brownies before removing them so that they don't all fall apart. And if I were to try to bake an entire batch of brownies using my silicone molds, I'd have to have the oven running much longer than I wanted it to. And there would be long periods where I actually wouldn't be baking anything because I would be waiting for my molds and the brownies to like be frozen. But enough about those brownies. We will revisit them later. Obviously, you guys saw that I kind of baked my standard chocolate cake. And again, I only have so many of these silicone molds. And so I kind of need to like scrape them out before adding more batter. And this just kind of takes a while. So just like with my brownies, I also made these chocolate cakes way before my party. And I just stuck them in the freezer so that they can really firm up. It makes stacking the cakes later on a lot easier. And it's something that I definitely can do weeks ahead to make my life as the party approaches a little bit easier. And we're seeing more brownies pop up on the same day I'm making my chocolate cake. And I'm just adding these once they were frozen to the brownies that I already had in a container in the freezer. It's now a different day and we are making my vanilla cake. I wasn't sure if I'm gonna change this up in the future, but for now, this vanilla cake is my go-to recipe. It incorporates a lot of just basic ingredients, but one difference compared to, let's say, my chocolate cake is you actually separate the eggs and beat the egg whites with some sugar, kind of almost making a meringue and you really want stiff peaks and then you fold that into the other mixture and that really helps give it like an airy feel. However, I must say this cake is pretty dense in my opinion. It's not as like fluffy and light as maybe if you just made a box cake. So I am kind of looking for a homemade recipe that is nice and fluffy, but I do have a lot of family members that like this more dense kind of vanilla cake. So it's not bad, it's just, you know, I, I'm also looking for something different as well. Shine bright up all night, whenever slow went down. Fall in love, drunk mistakes, we're bound to hit the ground. Gotta keep this feeling, keep on breathing.
So similar to my chocolate cake, I had to, you know, remove the baked cakes. Once they kind of cooled, I transferred them to some saran wrap, scraped out my silicone like cake pans, I guess, and refilled them and baked more layers that way. Just like with my chocolate cake, I made sure to take care of this step for party prepping long before the party was approaching because I could just stick it in the freezer. And I even did the same kind of thing with my buttercream. I was planning on making vanilla and chocolate buttercream, so I knew that that would be very time consuming. So I figured I would take care of the vanilla buttercream on this day. And once it was made, I was just going to stick it in a, you know, sealed, freezable container and throw it in the freezer until a day or two before I was ready to work with it. And then I was going to let it get to room temperature and kind of whip it back up again so that I could work with it nicely. Another task that I knew that I could take care of long before the party was some of the goodie bags. We didn't get a pinata this time around, so I just bought a pinata's worth of candy and stuffed these goodie bags as best as I could. I really tried to make sure that each goodie bag had essentially like the same candies. Unfortunately, the bag of candy that I got maybe didn't have like enough of one flavor of Laffy Taffy, but it had enough Laffy Taffies for everyone to get a Laffy Taffy. So not all of the bags were exactly identical, but they all pretty much had the same number of pieces and the same kinds of candy. So now we are within like a week of the party and I figured I could start with this little treat. I'm going to be making little stoplight pretzels. And I figured I could do this, you know, a number of days before the party because all of the ingredients are stored at room temperature anyways. So I figured that just assembling them in a different way wouldn't really change the shelf life. These are a relatively easy treat to make, but they are slightly time consuming. So on this day, I went to Dollar Tree and found this impossible clear puzzle, and I thought it would make for a funny, like, prize at our party, and I would just call it a windshield. So I bought this, like, a couple days leading up to the party and wanted to throw this in here. We are still a few days out from the party, and I figured I would take care of some of the decorations. This banner, along with a lot of the other decorations that you guys will see throughout this video, were given to us by Wern Sai. I did an unboxing video previously where I showed each and every product as it came, and I'm honestly in love with their products. They're very good quality, and a lot of them can be even reused for future parties. I have a feeling that Jack will not get tired of cars anytime soon, so we may actually reuse these in the upcoming years. I will make sure to put their information down below in the description box if you guys want to check out their Amazon page where you can see all of the different themes of party decorations that they have to offer. I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us Some 
So in a previous Get It All Done video, I showed you guys how I kind of traced the image of the car that was in the Wernsai package and I wanted to cut it out using my Cricut for my whiteboard, you know, design. Because this is a project that is very temporary, I tend to use Dollar Tree wood grain contact paper as my sticker of choice and I go and color over it using a Sharpie to make it black. If I was made of money, I would definitely just make it easier on myself and cut it out with removable black vinyl, but I need to be cheap and save where I can, so Dollar Tree wood grain contact paper is my vinyl of choice. This same night, I knew that I had to make my chocolate frosting and really start assembling my cake since the birthday party was right around the corner. So I decided to whip up the chocolate frosting and at least get my crumb coat done. Now for most of my parties, I do try to do something new with my cake. It could be a design that I've never tried before or a technique that I've never tried before. Like one year I did a drip cake and that was really kind of like the first time trying that particular recipe for a drip. I've also done a unicorn party, which was like on my bucket list of parties to do and to do like the just the typical unicorn cake. I've always wanted to try that, so I was happy when my daughter wanted a unicorn birthday party. So I thought that maybe the new thing I could try this time around was to make a checkerboard cake because there was a lot of checkerboards in the decorations that were inside provided for us. There were checkerboard flags that I could put in the brownies. You guys will see those in a bit. And I just thought it would really fit the theme. And so the way that we actually make a checkerboard cake is to cut out little circles from our cake layers and interchange them. So that's why I made a vanilla cake and a chocolate cake so that I could do this. My first layer was chocolate, vanilla, chocolate. And so then the next layer up had to be vanilla, chocolate, vanilla, and alternate as, you know, as high as you want your cake to go. And then when you cut your slices, like a standard slice of cake, you get a nice checkerboard look. All you left me was a radio. And it goes like, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. And it goes like, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. When I press play, all I hear is you. Ooh. And it goes like, ooh, ooh. Once my crumb coat was actually done, I wanted to think of some other kind of like papery activities I could have on the tables for my guests. 
And so I kind of like designed this random worksheet using a font from defont.com. I just kind of looked up like car fonts and I found one that I liked with images that I liked, downloaded it and used like 15 of the images and just continued to copy and paste them in a random order and you know, maybe three of one image and seven of another and so on. And this is just like a little image search. This is definitely an activity that really any age can do. You can do it with your two-year-old and ask them to point out like little images that match, or it could just be something to kind of, you know, keep your hands busy as you have a conversation with someone else. So I printed out a bunch of those, made my little key if anyone was curious of the answers, although it's pretty easy to figure out, and then I got back to decorating my cake. My original plan for this cake was just to keep it really simple, to do like a vanilla layer on the outside of the cake and then maybe do a black drip on the top. Then I was going to stick like the happy birthday sign in there and maybe put a little car on top and call it a day. But when I did a test run for Jack's like actual birthday little mini cake, I realized that the black melting chocolate that I bought for the drip looked more purple than I would have liked. So the decorations that you are going to be seeing is just something that I'm kind of making up on the spot. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. It wasn't my first, you know, idea, but I am really happy with the final result. So at this point, I really wasn't sure if I still wanted to do a drip, but I just decided to go ahead and paint on with some blue frosting, some clouds. But then I really left it up to like my TikTok viewers to see what they recommended to kind of finish off the top of this cake. I felt like adding a black drip could still work if done perfectly right, but it probably would have just messed up my entire design. And I really wasn't sure how I wanted to finish this off. But we will come back to this in a bit. This cake is gonna be stored in the fridge and we gotta get to making some orange fluff for this party. This is a really easy recipe and really can be like changed up depending on the flavor jello that you use and the fruit that you wanna put in it. In the future, I could see doing like a red jello of some sort and adding in strawberries and raspberries or, you know, just some other combination that will be equally delicious. Let's take it slow, where you go, I go to. And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow, who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time wherever you are. So here we see more of the Wernsai decorations. If you guys missed my unboxing video, they have so many different options and like packages that you can use to really like up your birthday party game. 
But right now we are gonna be preparing our like dessert and treat table. And once my table cover is on, we're just gonna be assembling the actual arch for my balloon arch, but we're gonna take care of the balloons a little later. This wall was blank and I had so many of these cute signs from Warren Sai and I actually thought like a little collage would look cute and then I was going to use just a few of the signs in other parts of my party area. You know you'll have a good time wherever you're with me. Day breaks and I'm burned by the morning light. I make the same mistake more than twice. Same song. So on this day, I took my two kids to visit like my side of the family at Chick-fil-A and we just had a get together because we had my brother and his wife like in town visiting and Juan stayed at home to, you know, tackle some more tasks for the party. Now as a little gift to me, because it was my birthday party too in some sense, I asked him to blow up and tie a bunch of the balloons. This was a great like time saver for me and definitely a gift because tying that many balloons can really hurt my fingers. So by the time we got back from dinner with my family, the kids were ready for bed. So they went to bed and I got working on the balloon arch. I'd like to thank Deco Joy for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They sent us this balloon column stand. If you watched one of my previous videos, you definitely got a sneak peek at how this turns out. These were really easy to set up. They have telescoping poles that make changing the height of the balloon column like really easy. The packet also comes with a water bag for each stand and you just fill this up with water and it weighs down your columns so that you can feel comfortable putting it outside if you're having an outdoor party or inside with maybe some kids who are touchy-feely with the balloons like my little boy. Although not necessary, the kit does come with balloon clips that make it really easy to put the balloons on the column. But if you happen to lose these or whatever, you can still attach the balloons by tying them together and twisting them around the telescoping pole. There's also a little topper piece that you can put on top of the telescoping rod and that can hold a balloon of your choice. If you wanted to put like the number of, that your child is turning, you can put that up top. I decided just to use one of the balloons that I had with the little like racing flag on it. 
I will place the link to this product down below in the description box for your guys' convenience. And if you guys are looking for balloon arch kits in addition to balloon columns, I'll definitely put the link to my video showing the three-in-one balloon arch stand that DecoJoy has so you guys can check out that product as well. But again, I'd like to thank DecoJoy for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And now we are going to try to finish this birthday cake. So I had ran out of my vanilla frosting. I only had a little bit left and I finally decided how I was gonna finish this top of the cake. So I whipped up a little bit more vanilla frosting and added the remaining blue that I was using to make the clouds on the cake to kind of make this light blue frosting. And then I was gonna pipe a little rim around the top of the cake. So we're gonna to top this cake with the happy birthday sign, two little racing flags, and a little toy car that I made sure to clean, don't worry, uh, on top of the cake. It was getting a little late, but there was still a lot of work to do. Now that the party was the next day, I used these balloons that came in the Wernsai package and put a little glue dot on top of them and then blue painter's tape on top of the glue dot with the sticky side out so that I could press the balloon onto the ceiling, giving the illusion that it had helium inside. I especially like this technique because even if you have like the fan on, the balloons stay in place and really gives the entire room like a fun party vibe. This evening before the party, I also kind of came up with the idea of putting some type of car part quiz out for people to try. And this was the activity that I was going to award the winner with that little windshield puzzle. I found some, you know, car maintenance quiz online and just decided to print it out. It did have as its last question, like a name the parts of the car. So I made multiple copies of this last page, but did have the entire quiz if anyone was interested in, you know, taking it. Then the last thing I did this evening was just get my food table ready. I covered my island with the second and last table cover that came in the Wernsai package and kind of got like the bowls and plates kind of where I wanted them for the next day. So it's the day of the party and Juan was really helpful in hanging up a lot of the banners. This was like a gift to me since it was kind of my birthday party too. And I went ahead and hung the easier thing of the pin the wheel on the car game that Wernsai sent us. Shadows, yeah, you cry for Jack, what do you see? <laughs> uh. 
get it, Bubba. Go get him. Bubba, where's the cars? Car? Where? Car. So as you guys saw, Jack absolutely was like in a trance when he saw all of the balloons. I think he really loved his little birthday party set up and the party as well. But I wasn't done yet. I still had to prep and cut some of the fruit and finish up some final touches around the house and outside. So my family consists of, you know, a variety of ages of kids. We have some teenagers all the way down to newborns attending. And so I really try to make sure that there's something for everyone. The little toy cars that we have were definitely used throughout the day. Jack obviously loves pushing them all around, but we also had some little like race cars that I envisioned people could race around our side backyard. And there were the little paper activities that you guys saw me print out. So when picking out my fruit, I wanted to have colors that resemble the stoplight, so like red, yellow, and green. And one idea that crossed my mind was to put a strawberry, a pineapple, and a green grape like on a toothpick or on some type of stick and just essentially have like little stoplights for everyone. But I realized that not everyone would like all three fruits and that would be a lot of work. So I'm giving you guys the idea here, but what I did instead was just put the fruits in their own separate bowls and assemble the bowls to look like the stoplight. This was a lot easier on me and then anyone who wanted a specific fruit could grab it and not have to worry about wasting fruit or taking something that they really didn't want.
Overall, I think everyone really had a great time at the party. The cake was a hit. I was so excited when I got to cut into it and see the checkerboard pattern. And it was just a really great day with family and friends. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And if you guys are new here and just stopping by for the first time, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of party preps on this channel, but I also just take care of all things mom. So I would love it if you guys check out my other videos. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.